Hey guys, it's Tony with Backwoods Biker Magazine and Wood Tramp Outdoors. A lot of emails, um, a lot of messages concerning haversacks. Tons of questions about them. So we're going to discuss where they originated, how they were used, and how we could use them today. Hang tight. Welcome back. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people have written us, you know, really over the over the last few years asking us to uh, talk about haversacks, and I've avoided the subject only because there are a ton of videos out there. Um, you know, we are currently in the process of putting together a, an in-depth article on the subject that I'm going to talk to you about uh, today. Uh, but, you know, we've just avoided it because everybody else does it. You know, a haversack is pretty simple to be able to cover unless you're trying to advertise one, you know. And uh, so I've stayed away from them. And then, uh, you know, one of the things that got me going here was not only your emails and your questions, um, but also um, we ran into a company that I felt, man, th these guys are, are above and beyond. And so I'll be covering them in another video. Uh, I will introduce you to their to their product, but um, you know that's kind of got us where we're at. So here was here was uh, you know some of the comments that were made to me uh, that got me uh, kind of interested in doing this. Uh, number one was um, you know I I know that haversacks and I'm quoting I know that haversacks originated during the Civil War or uh, There's another one that said haversacks uh, originated during the, the time of the frontiersmen. Uh, and there was another one uh, that uh, said that the haversacks had their originations in um, uh, the world wars. And the truth of the matter is, there's proof, historical proof, that, and our archaeological proof, that the concept of the haversack not the term haversack, but the concept of a, of a bag um, giving you conveyance of tools, rations, and things like that can go all the way back to the time of the pharaohs and the pyramids in ancient Mesopotamia. Uh, you can see some of the things that I'm going to show you here and just kind of walk you through a pictorial history of how these bags have been around for a long time. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not a, a new concept. I mean, somebody back then that was under the hot beating sun that was making bricks with straw uh, or pounding rice or planting wheat figured out, you know, it'd be a whole lot easier to sow wheat if I had it in a bag and just threw it around. And back then they would make the bag out of animal skin or they would make it out of uh, reeds, you know, woven reeds. There was a, a lot of different ways that they, they did these bags, but it's not something that was new. But with each century, um, you know, they modified them to fit their geographical region and especially the particular purposes that, um, you know, they might, might have for those. So we fast forward, you know, and the, the guy that said that the haversack originated during the Civil War wasn't all the way wrong. Because, first of all, the, you have to understand the term haversack. It's derived from, from an, an, an old German word uh, that de depicts uh, an oat bag. Uh, havers is oats and a sock is, is bag. Um, and so they, they call it a haversack. And during the time of the Civil War, uh, and actually before the Civil War, uh, many immigrants come to the United States and they regularly had with them what they termed as a haversack. You can hear that I'm not too far off the highway here. Uh, I'm out in the country, but it's still a highway, two-lane high, two highway, so I apologize. Um, and <clears throat> Ulysses S. Grant was, was so impressed with that uh, concept of carrying some rations with them, he actually made it an official uh, part of the Union Army's kit, was what he termed as a haversack. And they had to have 40 rounds of ammunition and four days worth of rations that they carried in their haversack. So kind of get in your mind, it was about a 12 by 12 with a, with a shoulder strap on it. So 
you know, it's it's been around and every generation has used it. You know, David Crockett, as you could, as I showed you, uh, Daniel Boone. I mean, just anybody that out, was out in the woods um, realized that it was it was very convenient to be able to have a bag on your shoulder with um, you know the things that you were going to need for you know your journey whether it was a day or you know for 30 days you know different things went inside the bag again the geography and the purpose um, that you were going to be out, out in the woods for would dictate what was going to go on in that bag so now we fast forward to uh, this century and not only this century but I want to get you to today because there's so many different haversacks out there and I want to just show you some uh, that you know, they're not so much impressive to me as they are um, a utilitarian piece of equipment that I think that everybody should understand, okay? And you don't have to spend a lot of money for it. Um, matter of fact, you're going to see a bag that I made based upon um, a bag uh, that um, was used uh, during colonial times. Um, by you know um, poor farmers uh, and uh, you know so hang tight we're gonna get the camera ready and all that stuff and uh, let you see some of these bags all right guys uh, this first bag is as I told you um, I copied it uh, as much as I could off a bag that was uh, carried by uh, common uh, farmers you know uh, that were not very wealthy that had to just kind of improvise with what they had and th this is made out of a jute style uh, burlap as you can see I'll back up just a little bit here um, and it's bigger than the traditional 12 by 12 size you know, I just it's a bag that I had actually what came in this was industrial parts uh, from a factory and uh, they had these bags and I grabbed a few of them and I thought you know what uh, I'm gonna do that haversack thing sometime so let's just go ahead and make it, it was you know I hand stitched it um, it has some canvas gussets on here as you can see to uh, make it a little bit more sturdy. It's a bucket style. Um, it has no pouches or anything like that, but I mean you could see through the thing. Uh, it wouldn't protect your gear all that much, but it would help you to carry whatever. You go out foraging with this. Uh, you could carry, you know, probably uh, at least a couple nights worth of gear if you really wanted to take it out in the bush with you that way. And uh, I think that in all honesty, I have less than five dollars in this thing. I probably have more like because I got the burlap for free uh, And everything else I'd say it was less than two bucks. So, you know, that's that's pretty reasonable for for, for a haversack You know if you're looking to go budget and you, you want a haversack, but you can't afford a, a better one Make your own and it doesn't have to be out of this. You can actually make it out of a pillowcase if you'd like to you know, there's a lot of um, Patterns out there, but I wanted to show you this now if you want to see one that's upgraded just a little bit um, and not much, you know, I was very disappointed with this bag. This is a wax canvas bag um, that came from Self Reliance Outfitters, Pathfinders. Um, and I did expect more from them, but um, if full disclosure, um, this was very cheap. I think it was less than $25, something like that. And they have a better one from what I understand. But, you know, I'm thinking wax canvas, uh, but it's a, it's a smaller bag that, uh, you know, as you can see, um, there you go, the, it's got a nice little pocket in it. That's one of the things I did like about this, but it, it's so thin when you hold it up, you can see through it. And I'm really concerned whether or not that this is going to be able to keep out, you know, uh, the rain and the moisture like it, it should, you know, because it's supposed to be wax canvas. Um, it's Chinese made, which... You know, you be the own judgment on that there, but you know there is just a few things in here that I have, um, n not a lot, but there's a plastic bag in here, and I got a compass and fire starter, and uh, I got a Sawyer Mini in there, and you saw that bandana, and there's a flashlight that's hanging on here, just something that I might take out uh, when I am wanting to pick up tinder or things like that. But this really isn't a bag that I would carry. Uh, because of that fact, but I wanted to show you, you know, that, that one that I showed you before, that's like no budget bag, and this would be considered a low budget bag, all right? So let me show you the, the uh, next one that um, you'll probably like, because this one is made out of, of coyote skin, 
uh, took me two coyotes to be able to make this bag. But I saw a bag when I was a Boy Scout, obviously many moons ago. And uh, uh, we went to a Frontiersman's Rendezvous. And this fella had a bag made out of coyote skin. And I thought, man, I'd love to have that. But I couldn't afford it, you know, at all. So I always said, you know, I get a chance. I get the time. And time has really been the killer. Uh, because there's a little bit of an investment of time to be able to put these things together. But this particular bag, I actually um, waxed some canvas and made an inner bag. And it's got a, a bucket style. That's the main part. And this is about a 12 by 12, something like that. Maybe not quite that big. Uh, but I also had a secondary pouch on top where I could put the things that I wanted quick access to. You know, whether it was a flashlight, um, a multi-tool, whatever it was. And then... I use the other part for, you know, putting berries and tenders and, and I got stuff down in there right now. Some tender was in this one here, but uh, as far as price on something like this, well, if, if you shoot your own, own coyotes or trap them, do whatever you want, uh, it's just going to cost you the, the, you know, the day, the time and that, you know, because, uh, and, you know, rounds of ammunition, whatever. Uh, but if you go out and you buy pelts, ex especially in this area here, they're processed. I think right now coyotes are going for around $32 to $35 uh, a pelt, you know. And uh, I got two of them here. So let's just say $70 in pelts uh, and another $10 in uh, the wax canvas. And so that's uh, $85. And, you know, all the other miscellaneous stuff, you know, the threads and all that that I put together, I hand sewed it. Um, so, you know, we'll just, we'll just call it a hundred bucks in materials. And I think that'd be safe, you know, with the wax and all that. But, you know, what the real expensive part is, it took me, uh, two days to be able to do this. Uh, just cutting it all together and, and putting it, you know, there. But, you know, I've had it for, uh, several years and I've had a lot of offers to buy this thing. I just couldn't part with it. But I think I'm, I'm getting to the point where I am going to get rid of it here and, be honest with you, I'll probably sell it for a couple hundred bucks, you know. But uh, so if you like, if you like that, and you want to buy it, just uh, just text us, you know, and see if we can work something out. But this would be another one, you know. And this is what what you know. Uh, a lot of frontiersmen, a lot of mountain men carried these, uh, and they were very successful with them. All right. So now we're gonna go up to a little bit more modern thing here. This is a bag by a company uh, that has super impressed me. Um, you know, we see a lot of wax canvas stuff. I like wax canvas. It's very rugged. It's trustworthy. And this is from a company called Campcraft Outdoors. And um, we've seen several of their products. And I, I got to tell you, as far as wax canvas is concerned, I've not seen a better hand-processed wax canvas than this company right here. Uh, the bag is very sturdy very heavy duty this is a lifetime bag unless you just decide to cut it up with your knife it's very rugged it has not even come close to failing me uh, this bag I believe no is the bigger bag this is the regular size bag and then I'll show you the XL as well this is the XL this is the extra large right here this is about a 12 by 12 and I'm just gonna take a stab here this looks like maybe 14 by 18 and it's just a bucket style with a flap you know there's nothing special here um, except the strap you know the strap is an upgrade from just a single shoulder strap right here you can adjust this it's a little heavier also has a grab handle on the back you know and again you could you could take this out for you know a couple couple nights if you if you pack it right you know it's just easy to be able to do that you're going to be traveling light but um I don't have the prices but I, out here, but I'll make sure that they get in on the video. But again, this is the bag that I had out. Um, I got caught in a raging thunderstorm. Um, and I was concerned about, I had, had a video camera and a still camera, telephone. I had all kinds of stuff in here, you know, my cell phone. And I was just saying, man, I hope this thing does not leak. And um, rain subsided and I pulled everything out, poured it out. It was as dry as a bone you know so this was is very impressive as far as wax canvas he does it by hand uh, and it's his own 
uh, old school formula, you know, so hats off to him. So that was the, the regular one. This is the XL one right here. Um, can't go wrong with those, man. And again, you hold this up in the sun, you're not seeing anything through it at all versus the one from SRO that I told you about. Um, and then, as if that wasn't impressive enough, uh, probably a week or two after that, you know, uh, I was handed another bag from um, Camp Craft Outdoors. And I was told this is the next uh, generation of his, or upgrade, of his haversack. Um, and this is a haversack of all haversacks. I mean, you, you take a look at this thing here, how big this is. It's not real tall. It's about 14 inches high. I don't know the dimensions out here, you know, uh, but I'm going to lay this out to you when I do the review on the bag itself because I'm going to do that. Uh, but as you can see, this is really, really a, a nice bag. And what I have in here right now is enough gear for me to be out for uh, three days and two nights. That's my plan. And really, I could go longer than that if I, if I wanted to. I just don't have the time to do it. But uh, this is super impressive. And for all you bikers out there, whether you are a, a motorcyclist or you are an e-biker or just a regular uh, mountain biker, what a great pack. I mean, A, it will fit on the back of, of your motorcycle. It will fit in a medium-sized saddlebag. Uh, for an e-biker, hardly put any weight. There's 12 pounds in this right now. I weighed it this morning. Um, and talk about heavy duty and rugged. You'll see that in the next video. So please keep an eye out for that because, again, this is one of those companies uh, that I would endorse, you know, for... Uh, all of our subscribers, if you wanted to invest some money in, in gear, this is a great company to do it. So, you know, I hope that this has helped you out, you know. Um, you know, where where would this uh, uh, be applicable for a modern-day woodsman or a wood tramp, somebody who likes to get out in the woods? Well, again, you can, you can carry uh, your day's meal, water, shelter, uh, all your cordage, all your blades, uh, your illumination, uh, what, whatever you need, you can carry in one of these. Um, and you can also use it to pick up, you know, uh, berries, mushroom, uh, nuts, all your, your, your um, uh, fire starting materials that you might need from down to fine tinder to small kindling. You can gather it while you're walking. Haversacks are a great piece of gear to have with you. I don't go out in the woods really without a haversack. Um, it's just, you know, I don't take a backpack all the time. Uh, even the smaller ones like the John pack that I, I love. Uh, but this right here, um, haversacks are worth their weight in gold. You know, whether you're going out for two hours or you're going out for two weeks or just two days. Haversacks are a great piece of kit. They're not real expensive. You know, this is the most expensive one uh, that I have seen and this is only $85 and again watch the video on the campcraft uh, Haversack that we're getting ready to do actually we're gonna shoot it today. So Thank you for watching. Thanks for the question. We appreciate it um, And as always you guys ride free you live free and hey become a subscriber uh, And uh, you're entered into our monthly database. We're giving away some pretty pretty good stuff this this month including a knife so until next time you guys ride free, you live free, and as always, you be safe out there.